Hi, Om, dear friends. Welcome to Ashram Talks podcast number six. Today we have the story of the five blind men and the elephant. The following story will describe the limitations of our senses and intellect. Long ago, six old men lived in a village in India. Each was born blind. The other villagers loved the old men and kept them away from harm. Since the blind men could not see the world for themselves, they had to imagine many of its wonders. So they listened carefully to the stories told by travelers to learn what they could about life outside the village. They were very curious about many of the stories they heard, but they were most curious about elephants. They were told that elephants could trample forests, carry huge burdens and frighten young and old with their loud trumpet calls. But they also knew that the king's daughter rode an elephant when she traveled in her father's kingdom. So would the king let his daughter get near such a dangerous creature? In this way, the six blind men argued day and night about elephant. An elephant must be a powerful giant, claimed the first blind man. He had heard stories about elephants being used to clear forests and build roads. No, you must be wrong, argued the second blind man. An elephant must be graceful and gentle if a princess is to ride on its back. You are all wrong. I have heard that an elephant can pierce a man's heart with its terrible horn, said the third blind man. Please, said the fourth. You are all mistaken. An elephant is nothing more than a large sort of cow. You know how people exaggerate. I am sure that an elephant is something magical, said the fifth, that would explain why the king's daughter can travel safely throughout the kingdom. I don't believe elephants exist at all, declared the sixth blind man. I think we are all victims of a cruel joke. Finally, the villagers grew tired of the arguments, and they arranged for the curious men to visit the place of the Raja's daughter to learn the truth about elephants. A young boy from their village was selected to guide the blind man on their journey. The smallest man put his hand on the boy's shoulder. The second blind man put his hand on his friend's shoulder, and so until all six men were ready to walk safely behind the boy who would lead them to the king's palace. When the blind man reached the palace, They were greeted by an old friend from their village who worked as a gardener on the palace grounds. Their friend led them to the courtyard. There stood an elephant. The blind man stepped forward to touch the creature that was subject of so many arguments. The first blind man reached out and touched the side of the huge animal. An elephant is so smooth and solid like a wall, he declared, it must be very powerful. The second blind man put his hand on the elephant's trunk. An elephant is like a giant snake, he announced. The third man felt the elephant's pointed tusk. I was right, he decided. This creature is as sharp and deadly as a spear. The, the fourth blind man touched one of the elephant's four legs. What we have here, he said, is an extremely large cow. The fifth felt the elephant's giant ear. And so he said, I believe an elephant is like a huge fan or maybe a magic carpet that can fly over mountains and treetops. The sixth gave a tug on the elephant's coarse tail. Why, this is nothing more than a piece of old rope. Dangerous indeed. The gardener led his friends to the shade of a tree. Sit here and rest for the long journey home, he said. I will bring you some water to drink. While they waited, the six blind men talked about the elephant. An elephant is like a wall, said the first. Surely we can finally agree on that. A wall, said the second. An elephant is a giant snake. It's a spear, I tell you, said the third. I'm certain it's a giant cow, said the fourth. Magic carpet, there is no doubt, said the fifth. 
Don't you see, said the sixth, someone used a rope to trick us. So their arguments continued and continued, and their shouts grew louder and louder. Wall, snake, spear, cow, carpet, rope. Stop shouting, called a very angry voice. It was the king, awakened from his nap by the noisy argument. How can each of you be so certain that you are right? asked the ruler. The sixth blind man considered the question, and then knowing the king to be a very wise man, decided to say nothing at all. The elephant is a very large animal, said the king. Very kindly, he's, he explained, each man of you touched only one part of it. Perhaps if you put the parts together, you will see the truth. Now let me finish my nap in peace. When their friend returned to the garden with the cool water, the six men rested quietly in the shade, thinking about the Raja's advice, the king's advice. He's right, said the first blind man. To learn the truth, we must put all the parts together. Let's discuss this on the way home. And so, the first blind man put his hand on the shoulder of the young boy who would give them, guide them home. The second blind man put a hand on his friend's shoulder and so until all six men were ready to travel together. Dear friends, the blind man and the elephant is a philosophical parable that um, very anciently and very widely throughout India is described as a warning for people that promote absolute truth or exclusive religious claims. You see, our sensory perceptions and life experiences can lead to limited access and therefore overreaching misinterpretations. So how can a person with a limited touch of truth can claim to grasp the whole reality? So that's not very consistent, not very comprehensive, and not very universal. It's only a very narrow scope of reality. And theologically speaking, when it comes to this type of moral or you know, wisdom teaching, we have to understand that today we have many philosophers, we have many preachers that they have their own agendas. And of course they can have different and interesting points of view, but if, if there is no comprehensiveness of all the traditions, religions and scriptures, what we call in Veda Siddhanta, Siddhanta means a conclusion, like when we have the thesis and the antithesis, And finally, we have a conclusion. So the conclusion must embrace all truths. So that's why the absolute truth is timeless, it's comprehensive, it's practical, it's open, and it's not clashing with other types of truth. It contains them all. It comprehends them all. And indeed, you see, each, each blind man represents one of the senses. So the sense of touch, the sense of, you know, smell or taste and... This, this, in this way, the sixth sense, it's a mind. So five senses in the mind are the six elephants, uh, blind men, that are trying to grasp the truth just by one method. So we must embrace the whole things and we must understand truth from wider scopes, from bigger and from wise and profound scopes. This is the, the, how the limited perspective on the objective truth leads to misinterpretation and leads to uh, narrow points of view. So that's the nicest thing about Veda is that we have a conclusion, that we have a goal, that we have a, let's say, final achievement, which is to transcend the material realm, which is to transcend the senses, the mind. And therefore the Atman, the spiritual soul, it's the most important thing to practice sadhana, to practice bhajana, to practice every single day to be a better person, to be a better human being, to be a more humble, tolerant, patient, compassionate, deeply touched by people's emotions and not very cold, detached or attached to material things. It's a point in the middle, not to be attached and not to be detached, but the middle point. And that's where devotion grows. That's when the love for God develops. And that's very nice fanaticisms and to take extreme parties it's not healthy we have to be centered humanistic spiritualistic at the same time practical but at the same time wise intellectual but emotional so it's a whole thing not to take only one road but to take them all and in the same way learn through all these 
methodologies, intellectuality, spirituality, um, emotionality, relationships, advices from friends, from Siksha Gurus. Siksha Gurus are those gurus or teachers that advise you in the practicality that help to shape your criteria. So this is where the word temple comes from. Temple means in Latin to, to, to forge, like to create a type of character, strong, determinate, responsible. And exactly if we use, for example, if I use my sense of, ear, of hearing or my sense of watching without using the others, I will arrive to very hasty conclusions. And that the idea is to meditate, analyze, reflect, but not only speculate intellectually, but hear the sources who have the truth. In this case, the king represents the person who can see the truth because he had this, the eyes and he was able to see the elephant. And therefore, sometimes when we need help, we are um, doubting and speculating, how can I solve this by myself? Sometimes we have to, you know, accept we have a problem, I'm not able to solve it by myself, I need help. And don't be afraid, don't be ashamed of asking help because the most intelligent persons are the ones that ask for help. Mm -hmm. So take care, have a nice week. See you for next podcast. Hari Om. Oh.